3. Dragons in Modern Times, From Fairy Tales to Fantasy Novels 3.1 Dragons in 19th Century Novels The 19th century saw a significant shift in how dragons were portrayed in literature. While previous centuries had seen the dragon primarily as an enemy to be defeated, the 19th century experimented with new perspectives and interpretations of these mythical creatures. In Victorian literature, the dragon became a complex and multifaceted figure, often used to symbolize social and ethical issues. A striking example is Kenneth Graham's The Reluctant Dragon, a story in which a peaceful dragon prefers to compose poetry instead of fighting. This tale not only challenges the traditional idea of the dragon as a ruthless monster, but also offers a reflection on war and violence. In addition to being used as metaphors, dragons were also depicted as creatures of extraordinary intelligence and wisdom. This tendency is particularly evident in the works of authors such as Lewis Carroll, whose Jabberwocky dragon from Alice Through the Looking Glass is a mysterious and complex creature, symbolic of the looming unknown. The 19th century also saw the rise of the fantasy genre, which spawned a series of dragon stories that take place in completely fictional worlds. These novels pioneered a multiplicity of interpretations and depictions of dragons, ranging from fearsome monsters to wise counselors, and laid the foundations for modern depictions of these mythical creatures. While the 19th century heralded a new era for dragons in literature, the 20th century brought further innovations and changes. The dragon, with its symbolic versatility, continues to be a staple in a variety of stories, and its role and meaning will continue to evolve as time passes. In the following section, we'll explore the impact of dragons on 20th century literature, an era that saw the emergence of some of the most beloved dragon stories of modern times. Dragons in 20th Century Novels The 20th century brought about a profound evolution in the representation of dragons in literature. They became not only powerful symbols, but also complex and intriguing characters. Their presence in literary works of this period often served to explore deeper themes, such as the conflict between good and evil, the aspiration for wealth, and courage in the face of the unknown. Among 20th century novels, Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea trilogy marked a significant turning point. In this work, dragons are intelligent and majestic creatures who embody the natural balance of the world. Their role is central, as they represent the wild and indomitable power of nature and the free spirit, and act as a spiritual guide for the protagonist. The science fiction genre has also seen its share of dragons. In Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern, dragons are empathic creatures who form a deep bond with their human riders. They are endowed with great intelligence and have the ability to teleport between different places and times expanding the imagination of dragons beyond the confines of traditional fantasy. As for fictional works for boys, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit A series features a memorable dragon, Smog. Not only does his presence play a key role in the plot, but his character is developed in a way that gives him depth and complexity, making him one of the most iconic dragons in 20th century literature. In the shadow of these literary giants, dragons continued to play important roles in a number of works, demonstrating their versatility as symbols and characters. From the terrifying Fafner of William Morris's epic, Sigurd the Volsing, to the complex dracoracial politics of Gordon R. R. Dixon's The Dragon and the George, the 20th century was a century of dragons. From 19th century plays to modern-day fantasies, dragons have proven to have an enduring and significant presence in literature. In the next paragraph, we will focus on one of the most famous and well-loved depictions of dragons in 20th century literature, J.R.R. Tolkien's Smog. Tolkien and the Dragons, The Case of Smog In the work of John Ronald Ruel Tolkien, a British author known for his epic fantasy works, dragons occupy a place of primary importance. The author's dracoid creatures are imbued with power, wisdom and evil, embodying arrogance, greed and terror. Among these, one in particular stands out for its complexity of character and for its importance in the plot, the treacherous and powerful Smog. In the novel The Hobbit, Smog is the last great dragon of Middle-earth. He lives in the Lonely Mountain, where he keeps an immense treasure stolen from the dwarves. But Smog's true worth lies not in his might or treasure, but in his character and the role he plays in the story. 
He is intelligent and cunning, with a tongue as sharp as his fingernails. His dialogue with Bilbo Baggins is among the book's most memorable moments, demonstrating his quick wit and ability to manipulate others. Furthermore, Smog presents a major challenge for the protagonists. It is not only an enemy to be defeated, but a symbol of greed and corruption. His presence tests Bilbo's courage and cunning and brings to light the tensions and conflicts between the inhabitants of Middle-earth. Thus, the dragon is not just an antagonist, but a narrative tool that allows Tolkien to explore deeper themes. The figure of Smog has had an enormous influence on the depiction of dragons in later literature. He established the pattern of the dragon as a powerful and cunning creature, capable of speech and reason, and not just a mere monster to be defeated. This has paved the way for a variety of interpretations and depictions of dragons, ranging from evil and destructive creatures to wise and benign ones. After exploring the figure of Smog and his impact on fantastic literature, in the next paragraph we will focus on another series of books that brought dragons into the collective imagination of a new audience, J.K.'s Harry Potter series Rolling. I Draghi in Harry Potter In J.K. Rowling's work, Dragons are formidable and captivating presences that add mystery and drama to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. However, they are not simple beasts, but complex and fascinating beings, capable of generating both terror and wonder. In the seven books of the series, different species of dragons are encountered, each with their own distinctive characteristics. The baboon of Hungary, for example, is reputed to be the most dangerous of all dragons, with powerful fiery breath and iridescent dark bronze scales. The Norway egg, meanwhile, has a metallic grey coat, eyes as bright as the moon, and a notoriously hostile temper. These dragons are not only challenges to be overcome or monsters to be feared, but also creatures to be admired and respected. An example of this is the little dragon Norbert that Hagrid, the Hogwarts gamekeeper, raises in the first book. Norberto's story expresses the complexity of coexistence between humans and dragons, touching on themes such as animal care, responsibility and the challenge of coexisting with such powerful and dangerous creatures. Additionally, dragons play a key role in many action scenes in the series. Perhaps the best-known example is the Triwizard Tournament Challenge in Book 4, in which Harry must escape the baboon of Hungary to obtain the golden egg. This scene emphasizes not only Harry's courage and ability, but also the dragon's intelligence and power. Finally, dragons represent one of the many links between the wizarding world and the muggle world. Legends and myths about dragons exist in both worlds, even though muggles are unaware that these creatures are real. This creates a subtle connection between the two realities, and suggests that magic may be hidden in plain sight, just waiting for someone to acknowledge it. With their mix of danger and wonder, the dragons of Harry Potter have become an unforgettable part of the series' fantastic imagery. They have stimulated the imagination of readers, leaving an indelible mark on the panorama of fantasy literature. The next paragraph will take us to another world of dragons, one very different from that of Hogwarts but equally fascinating and complex, The World of a Game of Thrones, by George R. R. Martin. I Draghi in Game of Thrones In the universe of George R. R. Martin, creator of the A Song of Ice and Fire O series, dragons are mythical creatures of almost unimaginable power, almost extinct and closely related to the House of Targaryen. This dynasty, known for their silver hair and purple eyes, has a long history of dragon bending, which they used to conquer and rule the seven kingdoms of Westeros. Dragons, in Martin's world, are creatures of fire and destruction, powerful and feared creatures, but also vulnerable. The last of the Targaryen dragons were small and feeble, and their decline seemed to signal the end of the Age of Dragons. However, with the birth of Daenerys Targaryen's dragons, Drogon, Regal and Viserion, hope is rekindled for a return of these legendary creatures. Dragons here are symbols of power and terror, but also of freedom and aspiration. Daenerys, the last Targaryen heir, sees them as the key to reclaiming her place on the Iron Throne. Over the course of the series, she raises them from fossil eggs into formidable flying beasts, becoming the a mother of dragons, herself. They embody his family heritage, his ambition for power and his struggle for freedom and self-determination. However, dragons are not just tools of power, but well-rounded characters. 
Each of Daenerys' three dragons has its own distinct personality. Drogon, the largest and most ferocious, shares a special bond with Daenerys. Regal and Viserion, while less dominant, show loyalty and affection for their human mother. When these dragons suffer or rejoice, readers share their emotions. Additionally, the interaction between dragons and other characters contributes to the plot and character development. The relationship between Daenerys and her dragons is central to her personal growth. Through them, he learns to lead, to fight, and ultimately to rule. Tyrion Lannister, another key character, is also fascinated by dragons, and his interactions with them reveal his intellectual curiosity and deep empathy. In conclusion, the dragons of A Game of Thrones take the myth of the dragon in a new direction, imbuing it with realism and complexity. They are neither beasts nor gods, but living creatures with wants and needs of their own, capable of inspiring both fear and compassion. In the next section, we'll move on to exploring another aspect of dragons in modern literature, their role in children's novels. Dragons in children's novels Moving away from the coils of power of Westeros, we enter territories of magic and adventure, where dragons take on forms that are a little friendlier, while maintaining their aura of mystery and wonder. It is children's novels, a sphere of literature in which dragons find a very welcoming home. Take Cressida Cowell's How to Train Your Dragon a series for example. Set in a Viking world of lost islands and raging seas, the series follows the adventures of young Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III and his dragon Toothless. Contrary to the classic portrayal of the dragon as a menacing creature, Toothless is more like a capricious but affectionate pet. Dragons, in this universe, are companions and friends, and their interaction with the human characters is infused with humor and warmth. Another example would be Christopher Paulini's Aragon, a novel that combines epic action with the deep emotional connection between a boy and his dragon. Sephira, the Blue Dragon, is just as important and developed a character as Aragon. Their relationship, based on telepathic communication, is a fundamental aspect of the novel. Here, the dragon is a mentor, protector, and friend, and his interactions with Aragon show deep understanding and mutual respect. These children's stories present dragons in a more accessible and understandable way, without losing their inherent majesty and mystery. Whether they are companions, mentors, or friends, the dragons in these works are complex and beloved characters who carry their stories forward with spirit and heart. Additionally, these stories often incorporate valuable lessons, such as the importance of friendship, courage, and integrity. There is a certain magic in the way these children's novels bring dragons to life. They manage to capture the wonder and whimsy these creatures inspire, while maintaining an accessible and engaging approach. And perhaps this is where their charm lies, in their being both extraordinary and understandable, elusive and intimately familiar. But it's not just kids who fall in love with dragons. Adults, as we will discover in the next section, have their own way of appreciating and interpreting these fantastic creatures. From here, the discussion moves to dragons in adult novels, where the imagination can take an even higher flight. Dragons in Adult Novels As we advance beyond the age of innocence, we enter more complex and mature stories, where dragons continue to play crucial roles, but in deeper and sometimes darker contexts. Adult narratives offer a different perspective, allowing you to explore the more nuanced and complex facets of dragons. An example of this is Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, a series of novels in which dragons are personified not in alien creatures but in a single individual, the protagonist Randall Thor, also known as the Dragon Reborn. His role as savior and doomed destroyer carries with it enormous weight, and his struggle to accept and control his destiny adds an emotional dimension to the story. Another significant example is found in China Meevil's Perdido Street Station, in which a mechanical dragon, called the Builder, symbolizes the advance of technology and the abuse of power. The novel explores themes such as corruption, alienation, and the struggle for power, all embodied in the figure of the dragon. These adult dragons carry with them a deeper symbolism, often reflecting the fears, aspirations, and contradictions of human society. They are a reflection of the complexities and nuances of the human condition, and as such, represent much more than what appears on the surface. 
George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire O series, for example, uses dragons as symbols of absolute power and destruction. Daenerys Targaryen, with her three dragons, is presented as a figure of radical and uncontrollable change, evoking both fear and admiration. Yet, Martin also manages to make us empathize with these dragons, showing their vulnerability and desire for protection. Dragons, therefore, continue to maintain their charm even in these adult narratives, evolving and adapting to more complex stories and themes. Far from the stereotype of evil creature or mere companion, dragons become powerful and complex symbols of a range of themes and issues. Did you enjoy diving into the world of dragons with us? Click the like button to show your support. Dragon Sparkles, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode. The journey has just begun and you won't want to miss what comes next. Bell Books